Welcome back to GB Guns. We are out today with the Bull Armory Axe C Tomahawk. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. These are the first 10 rounds that I'll be putting through it at our reduced size torso at about 20 yards. Up there. Let's see if folks have a sense of scale. That's nice. Love those sights. I think this might be one that I'll want to shoot a little faster. <laughs> <laughs> First impressions are um, remarkable, and we'll get to that later. First, let's see what Graham thinks. First time on the range of the Bull Army XC Tomahawk. I'm noticing already that my uh, trigger finger rests really nicely in that ledge there. Glock 19 size gun, I always have to open my palm. I pinch my fingers too many times. See how it shoots. Good texture. Oh yeah, those dots are screaming at you, aren't they? Mm -hmm. That's easy to shoot. That was 10? That, yeah. That's really easy to shoot. This will be cool. I'm looking forward to this. Since it takes Glock mags, we have an extra test. That is our multi-mag test. We're going to do full mag plus one using the Bull Army magazines. Then we'll give you the multi-mag test to see what other Glock pattern magazines cycle in it. We'll do our trademark what's for dinner test to see what it eats. The dreaded spinner test for size and trigger control. Then five shot uh, at seven yard accuracy before we each give you our concluding thoughts. Um, I can't talk fast enough because I want to keep shooting this thing. Yeah. <laughs> full Magazine Plus One is where we test how the gun runs fully stuffed. We're using PMC Bronze and the Bull Army Magazines. There's our Plus One and 15 rounds. As you saw on the tabletop, these magazines do have a steel liner and witness windows on the back, which is really nice. Gonna shoot at the same target. It'd be great if I hit. Really, I'm just gonna burn it down because we're looking to see how the gun and magazine interact. Um, if I miss, you guys can ding it home for me. No issues whatsoever. Pretty darn smooth. And I gotta admit, I was focusing more on speed than hitting, but still a decent amount of hits there. Damn, this is, this is a nice gun. Next, the multi-mag test. Now for the multi-mag, we've got a variety of aftermarket Glock magazines to see what it runs on. Just three shots each. Uh, Tia can burn it down if she wants. We just want to see, does it run in this gun? First up is our Ultimag. Does it drop Locks free? open. I had to pull that out. Okay. What's that one? What is this one? That's a good question. That's why we're doing this, right? This yes. is the uh, AC Unity mag. Fed well. Got a stove pipe. Oh, drop two. That is probably a mag malfunction. But it did lock open and it does drop free. This is the Glock mag. Oh, this gun shoots so nice. Locks open and it dropped free. Oh, you want to know what this one is too? Yeah. This is the Yagaman. Another stove pipe. It also dropped the second round. Let's call that a mag fail. But it locks open. <laughs> <laughs> it's not dropping. Oh, it did drop free. This, the torque mag. Froze up a bit. Clearing malfunctions is not uh, something I enjoy doing. It always stresses me out a little bit. It's locking open. My That's thumb great. is not on the thing. So that mag's a no-go too. Okay. We'll save ammo. It didn't uh, move freely out of the mag well either. 
And this last mag is? Oh. So many particulars. <laughs> uh, this one is the Pro Mag. Okay. Weird. It didn't cycle that last round. It is absolutely not dropping free. All right, so we'll stick to the factory bull armory mags and the factory Glock mag. Sounds good. It's that time again. Thanks to our Ammo Squared supporters, True Shot Gun Club, and patrons, we've got What's for Dinner Test. The goal here is to see what the gun will eat. As we move past these, you'll see that they all have different overall lengths, different shapes, different places of the ogive, case material, case coatings, etc. We want to see, will the gun eat it? That is, does it feed it from slide lock? Is there enough energy to cycle and feed another round of the same type afterwards? And does it lock open when empty? The third round is there just to reduce variables. We're going from 90 grain to 165 grain today. No aluminum this time because, well, it's been hard to find. First up in what's for dinner is from Polyfrange. This is a lead-free 90 grain flat tip, frangible for target number one. So comfortable. You can tell that bullet is moving fast. Locked open. Such a pleasant pop. Target number two, Koenig's 110 grain jacketed hollow point, brass cased. This stuff's spicy. <laughs> Damn. That first one looked, uh, looked rough. You definitely had to take a little bit more control over that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had to remember that I was shooting a firearm. <laughs> Circuit number four is Federal's Punch 124 grain. Standard hollow point tends to be snappier. I'm going to hold on to the gun better this time. Yep, it's snappier. And we've had a failure to feed. This is using a factory Glock magazine. and it did not lock open on empty. Maybe we should drop the factory Glock mag. And folks, these mag tests that we do, keep in mind, it's a sample size of one and they're old mags. So maybe not the uh, best option to run here. We'll stick to the Bull Army magazines. Circle number five is the Bellum 124 grain. Comes in a nice fancy case. We used this recently at a course and found it to be cleaner, less smoky, and softer shooting than we expected for a European 124 grain. Yep, definitely more pleasant to shoot than the last stuff. Except I threw that shot. But no cycling issues and that's what we're actually testing here. And for circle number six, we have Federal's 124 grain synthetic training match. They're purple. Snubby nose, guys. Pretty good. Quite the percussion. Oh, those smell like nutmeg. <laughs> <laughs> and on circle number six, we have all the things in ZQI's 124 grain brass jacketed steel case. I Almost forgot. There. <laughs> <laughs> brass jacketed nickel plated steel case. And this is circle seven. Winter mint. I that smell that. That is the strangest smell, but it's winter mint. <laughs> Group nicely. 
Time for circle number eight. We have Hornady's Critical Duty. These are 135 grain with the flex lock in them. What I forget? Nothing. You just said critical duty. It is a. Cr you're terrible. <laughs> They're from Hornady. Oh. I do love when the wind blows the smell back. I can see there was definitely some more recoil with those. Definitely more recoil. Um, yeah. And my first uh, time shooting the Master Gunworks Gold Standard 142 grain hybrid def hollow point defense. 142 is an odd number. Never seen it before. They're beautiful rounds. Circle number nine. Oh yeah. There's no doubt in those are a serious load. No. Nice group. And for circle 10, we have the Stealth Ammo. This was sent to us from True Shot Gun Club. This is 165 grain TMC. Not, TM huh? TMJ. No, it's no, TMC. TMC. Okay. I thought you were having a medic moment. <laughs> circle 10. That one was all me. My eyes in this light uh, aren't faring well together. Well, next we have the dreaded spinner. Oh boy. How many rounds do you want? Um, in this, I'll, let's go eight. All right. Out at 15 yards, we have our six inch Titan Great Outdoors spinner target. We use this for sight and trigger control because you've got to time your shots on a small target that moves and the better you hit it, the more you hit it, the faster it moves, the more diff critical your timed accurate shots become. We're using PMC bronze, 115 grain. Let's see how we do. I think I was a little late on some of those shots. Uh, the trigger break is nice, but the wall is thicker or longer, I guess you could say, than a lot of other stuff that we've been shooting today. And so as I was burning through my ammo, I was learning to start pulling the trigger a little bit sooner, a little bit easier. I don't see that as a fault with a gun. I think it's still an appropriate self-defense trigger for sure. Uh, to give you plenty of time to, oh wait, no, that's a bad shot, or the situation has changed, I should not fire yet. For timing precise shots on a moving target like this, it was a challenge for me, and so. What were the sights like? Sights were fine. These uh, white dots, you guys saw them on the tabletop, are huge and definitely tra attention grabbing. They almost consume a six inch target at 15 That's what years. I was wondering. Uh, which also added to I think that also added to some of the challenge that I was having. If I spent more time with it, sure, I could get it. It just wasn't one of those instant. Tia's turn. I had so much hope for myself. <laughs> I felt I did pretty well though. The sights worked really well for me. Um, being so bright, being able to see the pale target moving behind it was easier between you know your sight post and all that stuff. So that helped me in being able to time those shots and actually land more than I normally would. Um, the, the break on the trigger is once you get more comfortable shooting and then you're slowing down watching that 
it almost gets a little more difficult than pulling just straight through. Um, burning it down on the steel, you know, in the beginning, I didn't notice it, but here I definitely noticed it when you pull back to that wall and then you have to break um, a little bit firmer than what I initially thought. Um, other than that, I really, I'm really enjoying all of this. It'll be interesting to see how those sights and trigger combo work on a one inch target from seven yards. I'm excited. Coming up is our accuracy shots. For five shots from seven yards, we'll be using the Master Gunworks LLC Gold Standard Ultra Premium Ammunition 115 grain ejected hollow point match target. That's a lot of stuff, but seems to be pretty nice ammunition. What circle? The left circle square. This gun is so comfy. Through that one. Or maybe I threw the first one since those two touched. Ha uh ha. -huh. Yeah, I definitely threw the first one. I'm gonna stick with that. So for my five shots from seven yards, I'll also be using the same ammunition that Graham did, this 115 grain gold standard from Master Gunworks. And I'll be aiming at the right circle square. through it. Kind of joking with you off camera i have never performed so poorly with a gun that i loved so much what does that say well that means it's a good gun i just got to learn it got to spend more time with it the trigger weight being being as appropriate as it is for defense and carry because that's the size of this gun a little bit heavier a little bit longer of a break than I want to shoot because it fits so well. It feels like a performance gun. It handles like a performance gun, except it's got that defensive trigger in it. So what does that mean? It means it's probably the ideal gun lovers carry gun <laughs> to run it faster. Well, obviously it can be run fast because we did that um, in the beginning. So it, it's at home in competition. It's at home as a carry gun. For the tests that we do, which admittedly are not easy, I encourage anyone who thinks they are to replicate them at home, um, was a challenge for me with this gun, but that is not deterring my love for this thing at all. We got this gun thanks to our patrons. They funded it, they requested it, and I'm really grateful for that because this is, this is a pretty cool piece that I think deserves revisiting in the future, or maybe we can try some of the other variants, different sizes, things like that. Overall, I'm very impressed with the Bull Armory XC Tomahawk. I think it is a, a well thought out, well engineered piece. And although it has its roots in the basic Glock design, it certainly doesn't feel anything like a Glock. So when I first picked this gun up today, I thought that I, I was a little hesitant to shoot it because it's so light and it just fits perfect in these this size gun can be really snappy um, in my experience in the past. I cannot say that about this gun. This gun is a dream to shoot and the attention to detail makes it fun. There are so many, the, the finger rest or uh, memory points, the ability to rest your thumb here in the front with a little bit of traction that's not gonna grind your skin off. Um, the, the aesthetics that this gun has makes it even more pleasant to shoot. Um, as far as the trigger goes, when shooting it fast, it's right there for you. When shooting it with any type of concentration, it takes a little bit longer to break. And I think that that is a good thing, like Graham said, especially in a defensive situation. You wanna be able to ensure that, you know, what you're about to do is exactly what you wanna do. Um, the sights for me are great. That today is 
a corrected vision problem <laughs> <laughs> that uh, the day is wearing on me. Um, overall, I am very pleased with this. I'm really grateful that Graham was able to get one in so that we could review it. We, like he said, have had many requests, both his way and mine. Um, I, I just really can't get over how awesome this feels in the hand. I, I really want to shoot more. Maybe take it to a course. It feels a little bit small in my hand. Does that make it, I was thinking as every time I felt that my hand was a little big for the grip, that it's probably ideal for your grip. It's absolutely perfect for my, for my hand. And what I'm noticing even now is, you know, I mean, the more I'm with it, the more I notice about it. These front grips here, the way that they're textured or the shape of them, the way that all of this changes around the gun or as you move around the gun changes the way that you're able to maintain a grip. So when I'm here, I'm squeezing, it's in my hand, but it's not tearing my hand up. I just, we're going to shoot this a lot more. <laughs> so thank you patrons for making this video possible and thank you all for watching.